Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm pleased to be joined by Zach Balin, the screenwriter of King Richard, the new film about Venus and Serena Williams and their family, and especially Richard Williams, their father. Uh, Zach, the movie is, is so great. I, I've seen it twice now. I loved it. And I'm sure there's like probably a lot of different ways you could have come into a story about the Williams family and their sisters. How come you decided to go in, you know, through Richard and how their, you know, their early years, I guess, like what was the, what was the impetus for you to start there? Yeah, um, I think you're right. There are a lot of different ways you can probably go into any story. Um, when I, you know, when the when the producers Tim and Trevor White approached me about it, I think that Tim had really circled Richard as this pretty incredible character for a number of years, and had been um, had been looking into making a movie about about him and their experiences. So when it was brought to me it was always kind of through the lens of Richard, but I felt like that was really an interesting way to, to tell this story because I think we all know what Venus and Serena go on to have gone on to achieve in their, in their lives, but it felt to me more dramatic to focus the story on the time in their family's life when, when all the chips were on the table and that there was a real um, precarious situation of whether or not this huge gamble that they had made as a family was going to work. And that, that window seemed to me the, the most dramatic and it really distilled their journey down to something that was, you know, was a movie. And then in, in terms of Richard being sort of the, um, the one to guide us through the story, I just, when I started watching video of Richard and, and read about this really preposterous idea that he had that he was going to raise two tennis champions that had not been conceived yet and he had no experience with the sport that that just felt like such a you know a central journey for a character and so I, I really wanted to you know to sort of allow that to be the guiding principle of the story and then also just that <clears throat> you know Venus and Serena and really all of the women in that family achieved so much and that we as filmmakers I think really looked at it ultimately as a story of a of a father who can be overshadowing at times who who does like um who is looking for something personal in this experience but ultimately throughout the course of the story is is um relinquishing that responsibility and, and giving that agency to, to Venus in particular. And so that felt like a, a rewarding arc. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is. A, I, I love that what you said there. And I think that his, yeah, the way you show the, the fatherhood and the parent, the parent, I think that's such a great, that that's what makes the movie so good. Cause you, it's not just a sports movie though. I think you obviously, it is a great sports movie, but the, the parenting aspect is so different, not to jump way ahead, but there, the scene that I think for me, like the key emotional scene is, obviously towards the end when Richard and Venus have their conversation about uh, going, you know, into juniors. And she, you mentioned the parenting. One of the things that struck me was like when Venus is, uh, you know, trying to make her case, it's not that she's mad at Richard for not allowing her to compete. It's that she's upset and almost heartbroken that she doesn't understand. Does he not believe in her? And I thought that was so, that scene is really great and powerful. I guess, can you talk a little about, you know, like crafting that relationship and like kind of really the nuances of parenthood, I think, are really strong in this film. I, I know you're obviously a parent also. So I, it just like, yeah, can you talk a little about that and like how you kind of like came at it from that approach? Because I think it's really wonderful. Yeah, I think I'm glad you said that because because I think one of the things, I'm a big tennis fan, but one of the things that really attracted me to the to writing the story was that I do, I have a daughter, I have a son and, and you know, that's it's such a, transformative experience in your life and and I hadn't written anything about parenthood or being a parent and so I, I really wanted to sort of try to investigate that um, and then I think uh, that scene in particular you know we, we looked at it in a, in a lot of different ways just if you were to totally subtract the sports film element from it that you know it's it's still a story about a parent who has to let go of their of their child and allow them to go out into the world. And it's a you're questioning, you know, have I done enough? Are they going to be safe out there? Are they going to achieve the things that they want to? And 
I think that we looked at that as just a kind of universal experience. It could be the same as you're sending your kid off to college. It could be the same as any time you, you let them out in the world. But obviously the stakes with this, within this family were so high. Um, and, and then, you know, I, I give Will tremendous, I get Will and Ray deserve huge credit for that scene because because there was a time where that scene took place in a different location and Ray was, you know, said like, no, this is their, their relationship is seen through this, this kind of almost adversarial at that point on a tennis court there, the net is between them and we want to see them come together in that moment. So Ray really crafted that beautifully. And then <clears throat> there were a lot of, you know, Richard had gone through such tremendous trauma in his life. And I, and like, there were so many incidents that we could have chose for him to, you know, tell his experiences to Venus at that moment. And Will found that story. So that's a true story. And Will brought it to me and Ray and said, I think this is the one I, I want Richard to say here because, you know, it, it really linked that idea of him not being afraid of not being present. And so at the end of the match, when he, when he comes back and sits in the stands, you know, that, that he, that Venus knows that he's there for her. And so Will, Will found that story of Richard and, and I wrote it up with him and it was, you know, I think it's a beautiful scene. It's so beautiful. And it's like, I mean, if you, I think, there's a lot of different, like we were saying earlier, I was saying earlier, there's a lot of different ways you could have gone with this story and how this movie could have played out. And I think there's a version of it that's not as genuinely emotional. Like, I think you guys are, the movie is so good at like, it doesn't, it's not like, um, you know, it doesn't like, it, it's just so, it, you, the emotions are, are real. It doesn't feel very manipulative, I think. And I okay. think that's a credit to like you and and Ray also, and like the whole thing. It's like, and that scene in particular, I feel like is so, and it does pay off so well, like the end, like you said, like when he comes back to the match. I, I just think it's it's really, I I, I really appreciate that about the the movie. Oh, thanks. I mean, I, I really like that. That was my hope for it. I think that there are a lot of ways that the story could have been depicted, and I think there's a much more. I mean, there there's a much more sort of straight down the line sports movie version that is feels like a Nike commercial, and I think you know that could have been really interesting and, and dynamic, but Ray. I think really tapped into the idea that this was going to be a family drama and that everything that happened, you know, needed to feel intimate and fully realized in that way and not manipulative. Other, otherwise, then the, the story is so improbable of what, of what Richard came, this idea that he came up with and the fact that this whole family, when the girls were five and six, decided that they were going to reorient their entire life, their entire work schedules to, so that 15 years from there, they could all be world champions. And the fact that that came true, if, if there were false notes in the filmmaking, I think it would dilute the idea of how remarkable that was. Yeah. It's, it's really, you have that scene earlier in the film where he's talking to, uh, I forget the guy, it's Kevin Dunn, Dunn is the actor and he's like, how improbable it is. And you're like, that guy's yeah, not honestly, it is so improbable. And it's just, is like, you know, it's like, he's not necessarily, he's like, you know, it's not what, what we want to hear, but I'm like, it is truly improbable that this is how it happened. It kind of is remarkable. I just think that's so, yeah, it's really, really wild. It's a wild story. Obviously you mentioned the family aspect there, they're executive. I know the family was involved in, in the production and stuff, but I don't believe they were involved obviously when you started writing. Right. So like, how did you like, how, how does that work when you're writing something that obviously I think, you know, another thing I think that I'm not the first person to say the movie does not shy away from some of like Richard's complexities and certainly the relationships sure. and stuff that he had with his family. So it's not like you're doing like a hagiography, but like obviously they're involved. So how did how when do they come in and like how do you like approach that? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it was I, I think it was a really this is my first movie, so I don't know how other things have been developed exactly, but that um, I think the process with this was like fairly unique. So I met Tim White. Uh, who's one of the producers in 2017 and we were meeting about another movie and when I was leaving that meeting I happened to be going to the U.S. Open in New York and I told him that and he was like oh well if you're you like tennis sit down for like five more minutes I want to tell you about one other idea and he told me about this and I immediately was just you know like threw everything else out that I had and just said I, I have to do this movie you have to let me do it and and I came back with to him and Trevor with you know, this take essentially, like, this is what I think the movie is. And here's Richard's arc and, you know, what, what we thought it could be. 
And then c collectively, we all sort of decided that we, we knew we didn't have the rights. We knew we didn't have contact with the family yet. And that the, but we knew we would need it, not just, you know, for commercial purposes, but also because I was going to need to sit down and like talk to Boracine and Venus and Serena. Richard is so front facing that there was tons of documentation for me to read about that. But, um, but then we also sort of assumed that go, me and Tra Tim and Trevor, me not having any credits, like going to Venus and Serena and saying, oh, we, you know, we want to write a movie about your life that one, they've, you know, they've been approached so many times and that was just not going to be successful. So we decided to like, that I would write the script and then we would use that and probably hopefully, you know, attach a piece of talent that could then advocate for it being, you know, being real. So I researched the script independently. Um, that script is like ended up on the 2018 blacklist and that's the one that Will read, but Will so also said, you know, um, this is great, we'd love to do it, but you know, not, not unless the family has, has given their thumbs up. So um, at that point, Tim and I and Trevor like went on a long campaign of trying to get the script in front of Venus and Serena and Isha, who is this, their sister, ultimately read the script and agreed to sort of sit down with us and, and said, you know, if you're willing to, if you're willing to like dig in and, and, and interview us and, and really hear some of the intimate details, then we would love to be a part of it. And so that began a really interesting process for me where I got to sit down with Forcine and Isha and Venus and, and really, not, it, it, and to their credit, it was never, it was never them saying, we don't want this in the script. It was more them saying, oh, okay, like Orsine read the scene where what became the scene in the kitchen where, where Orsine and Anjanu, who was just incredible, um, you know, really lays into Richard about a lot of the mistakes that he's made in his life and, and his, you know, other children showing up. And she, Orsine read that scene and said, oh, this is going to be in the script. And we said, you know, we feel like it has to be it, to really be uh, true to what your experiences were. And she said, well, if it's going to be in there, let me tell you exactly how it happened. And a lot of the dialogue that is in there is verbatim from the from what she said. So that for me, that was huge. And and just, you know, we never <clears throat> excuse me, we never wanted to make a, a film about a family that went through this experience. We wanted to make sure it was a film about this family and these specific interactions and so for me it was huge to have their involvement at that point yeah that scene you're talking about is, is incredible and i think like like yeah like talking like the specificity of their relationships i think is what makes the movie so work so well as like a family drama for sure and i mean i personally didn't know much about aura scene at all so it's like really i think her whole character is really interesting and in how involved she was with the with the with the sisters as well as their coach and stuff and like all those different things I think that like again a different version of this movie maybe like sidelines her and the fact that you bring her in and like have her on equal footing with Richard is part of the reason it's so special oh thank you um yeah and sorry there's a there's a guy in my garage doing some stuff. um well I, I think that it, it that's that was huge for us to, to get that right and I think that because Richard was going to be such a like dominating force in the movie that we tried to utilize that to, to the advantage of the storytelling, I think. <clears throat> and that like for V or for Serena, you know, that Serena really was in the shadow for all, for many of those years because Venus was so talented and she was such a prodigy. Um, and that audiences might be coming in and saying, well, I know Serena more, you know, when is she going to sort of, take center stage in this movie. And, you know, we felt like that actually could work for our advantage dramatically because people were gonna question why she might, you know, have a smaller role. And then she has a great moment to come out and actually say, this is why that happened. And then for, I think for Orsine as well, that she really, well, I was just became so impressed with, with the real woman, you know, that she, she did so much for the family, not just being the breadwinner and, and raising all five of those girls, but, you know, she taught herself to play tennis and she was a coach and, and that she is a very private interior person. And so, you know, we tried to craft the character in a way where she begins in that way, but 
throughout the course of the film is really exerting her, again, her, like her agency and her voice when she feels like that the goal is being compromised. And um, Anjana was a huge part of, of building that. She's, you know, Anjana is a great writer as well. And we had, we had really good creative, like, I think chemistry and arguments and, you know, and, and really fruitful conversations that I, that made those scenes a lot better. And she brought a ton to that. Yeah. You mentioned earlier how this is obviously a blacklist script and, and Will read it. And we, so in fact, it's hard watching the film. It's like, there's not a lot of people who could be Richard Williams, right? I would imagine. Like there's a, it's a very short list of like actors who are that charismatic and have that big of a presence. So like when you were writing it is like Will Smith, like was, was he even on your mind or like, what was like, cause I, I, you're writing basically like a movie star part, you know what I mean? And it's like, you need a movie star to play that part. You can't get a better I, one than Will. Yeah, no, I mean, we're so lucky that, you know, he read it and, and said yes. And um, I knew, I, or at least I was hoping it was a really big role. But I think for, for me, I because Richard was a real character, I, I didn't have to sort of try to imagine who might play the role. I just tried to stay in thinking it was Richard. Um, but Will was so perfect for it because, I mean, obviously he, he brought so much of his own personal, you know, story into it. But I think Richard is can be really funny too. And Will is so charming and and I think he brings a real humor to it but then you know my scenes that are the favorite with him are like in the when he's in the backyard with Tony Goldwyn and it that just feels like a a a side of him that we don't get to see very much where he can be really determined and really you know uh, he can be really complicated in in that in that way and I always like the way Robert Ellswood shot that and and Ray staged it I always felt like that to me feels like Tony Soprano, like sitting by the pool and you're, he's just owning that space in a way that I, I was really excited to see Will do. Yeah, I, it's a great, it's a great scene. And you're right. It is like very much a Tony Soprano vibe to him there. And he's like so stubborn and will not uh, obstinate almost right. And his, his uh, willpower is just very, uh, really cool. Um, I know we have to wrap up here, I guess. And not to, I mean, no spoilers because it's like real life, but I, I, I love that you end the movie on a loss, right? Like with her losing. Can you talk about like how you came to like, you know, obviously again, like we said, there's probably a lot of different en exit points that you could have come to for the story. You know, why did you pick that match with Arantxa Sanchez Vicario? And like, how did you like come up with that, I guess? Well, I read about that. There was a, <clears throat> there was a lot of New York Times, contemporaneous New York Times articles that were following them at that, at that time. And I think in just in really in that initial weekend after I had talked to Tim about the movie, I read about that, that match and really just kind of latched onto that immediately and said, this is where it has to end. Because again, we all know what their careers went on to become, but that I felt like if we could frame the story in a way where the stakes of what we want them to achieve as people was going to arrive at this moment, you know, and it was not just about the financial success, but about whether or not they had, um, you know, all the choices that they had made in their life to not play juniors, to sacrifice so many different things in their upbringing, um, were gonna culminate into not necessarily this victory, but whether or not Venus, I think, felt uh, like an adult, you know, felt like she could go out in the world and hold her head high. And then, so, so it, I really hoped that we could develop a sense of, uh, of dramatic tension that could culminate in that moment. And that otherwise, knowing where their careers go, it might not, we might not have in the movie. Yeah, you know, the thing I love in that scene and kind of goes back to what you were saying before about having to let, you know, the parents letting the, their children go, right? So in, or when she's coming out of the locker room, he, she, she takes her bag but then uh, she hands it back to her dad. I just thought that was like really sweet. I don't know if that was something you guys intentionally thought of, but it, like to me, it was like, oh, like she is going for their own, but she still does like want the support of her family too. And I just thought that was like a great a nuanced part. I thought that was- That's really a really cool. touching moment. I think really great. And that that came on, I, I was very lucky. I get to be on set every day and, and that came on set. Uh, and <laughs> I think Isha actually said she should, you know, she should take the bag. 
and then and I think and then Sanaya like gave it back to him. It's really sweet. Yeah, and I think, it is. And I'd say that's how the whole film was. I mean, it, it was really collaborative because because Isha Price was there every day, and you know all the actors and Ray. It was just a really um, collaborative process that was was super fun. Yeah. Well, it starts it starts on the page though, and Zach Balin, your script is, is great. The movie's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, Zachary Balin, a screenwriter of King Richard. Thank you again. Thanks so much, Chris. 